Hello and welcome to a video all about the secrets of the Stardew Valley Expanded mod. All the juicy unlockables and obscure facts that you might not know about. I'm going to be showing them to you today. And what a place to kick off the video. This is the summit in Stardew Valley Expanded. It's not exactly a secret, but it is different from the base game. It's beautiful up here. The other farmers on this channel, or should I say other characters who like do the community center route and stuff are going to be helping me with this. Bunch of hack frauds. Anyway, let's go! We're gonna start by looking at the rewards that you get for the Community Center run and the Joja run. Now, both runs are connected to two very important NPCs, one of which is unique to the mod itself, Apples the Judomo. They arrive after completing the Community Center, and Maris of the Jojima, who is a fully interactable NPC in Stardew Valley Expanded. Upon completing the Community Center run, you'll get like a cutscene that pops up. The special circumstances for this, it's got to be like year 2, spring 26. You're going to see this little cutscene that tells you that something special is going on with the Aurora Vineyard. That's the abandoned vineyard that you might have been to already at this point. Heading over there, you get introduced to a quest system which involves handing over a buttload of star fruit. And basically this process, which involves a few cutscenes with a wizard and such, will unlock apples as an NPC. They live in the vineyard, they have a ton of different hot, hot events that all lead up to you being able to actually have Aurora Vineyard as your own piece of property. As well as getting apples and access to owning the vineyard in the community center route, you also gain access to the Junimo Woods, which is a whimsical, mysterious woods maze thing that leads to a Junimo village full of vendors with really rare items that uh, cost a lot of money. It's really useful once you get to it. The Junimo Woods entrance is actually shown to you in a cutscene when you enter the Cindersap Woods after completing the community center. If you still can't find it, here it is on the map. It's right below the Hat Mouse's house. It'll be on the ground. Little warp rune will be on the ground for you. You can't miss it. Now the Joj route has similar equivalents. First of all, Maris is the NPC who is of interest in this route. By befriending Maris and getting him to 10 hearts, you learn more about him, how ambitious he is and how much he actually cares about the town. You can actually get him to replace Lewis as the mayor. And guess what? He's actually really good at the job. He puts new pavements everywhere and he puts new lights. There's like a path running past Marnie's, one that runs up into the mountains. He even puts a car park behind Clint's house, which is funny because it ruins Clint's view and makes him more miserable. Upon fully getting him to 10 hearts and ensuring that you've completed the jo Joja community uh, purchasing list thing, Maris builds a Joja Emporium in town, which is basically the Joja equivalent of the Judomo Woods. It's like a Pokemon. It's wonderful. You can buy rare items that you can put in the museum and even unique crops called Joja Berries and Joja Veggies. I love them. They make tons of money. There's a bunch of rare food that circulates on the other side as well. And a dude on, on, on the roof will sell you really obscure, expensive items. Oh yeah, and also I have an egregious cameo on the roof on the 10th and the 24th of every season. Very fitting cameo for me. Now, both routes are connected by the fact that they both unlock the Sprite Spring when you complete them. The Sprite Spring was heavily featured in our first video. It's a special spring at the bottom of the West Woods. Here it is on the map. To trigger the opening of the Sprite Sprig, you need to complete the Magic Ink Quest. This is the quest that you get from the wizard after you've completed Eva Root. You gotta get this done. You'll get a little cutscene that tells you that it's open. And you come northeast down here and find this tunnel. When you go down into the spring, you'll find that the uh, map has actually been changed. It's a, it's a lot smaller, it's more beautiful. You've still got all these regrow balls on the other side of the water. But behind the waterfall, there is a secret area. There should always be a secret area behind a waterfall. There should be a lore. You go in there and there's all kinds of expensive regrow balls and things popping up on the ground. It's amazing. You get this as a reward for both routes. Now, eventually, when you've done all this stuff in Ivor Root, you're going to start saying to yourself, Oh God, I'm getting really tired of huffing it around the valley here. This is really difficult. Everything's really far out of the way. Even the Adventurer's Guild with its own unique location in this mod is really far out. I'm getting really tired of running around. Well, that's where this whole new special quest system comes into play. The wizard's going to show up and show you how to make warp rooms and build your own teleportation hub, which you'll have access to right on your farm. There's a whole bunch of prerequisites that you need to do to unlock this quest with a wizard. Luckily, we have an entire video on it, which is probably popping up as a recommended above me as I speak. But here's a snippet from it anyway. Hadley will tell you how you unlock this quest with a wizard. This is from the video. Hadley refers to the process as unlocking the Crimson Badlands, which is in fact exactly the same thing. Getting to the Badlands and unlocking the Portal Hub are both connected. So phase one of your quest to unlock the Crimson Badlands involves getting the Galaxy Sword, showing it to Marlon in a cutscene, 
meeting up with an adventurer called Alessia and seeing her cutscene in the Adventurer's Guild. Removing a boulder that's blocking the summit, because removing the boulder is different in Stardew Valley Expanded than from the base game. And completing the Ginger Island Volcano. These are the things you need to do to kick off a quest that's going to get you to Galdora. But don't worry about that quest yet. You got to deal with all these prerequisites or whatever. So yeah, once you've done that, the wizard turns up and he sets you out on your path to finding all of the warp ruins. Which simply means retracing your steps and going to all of these different locations and seeing a special cutscene where you find a special item and make a warp rune. Which will make it convenient for you to visit all these special areas in Stardew Valley Expanded. Marlon helps you out by giving you a crystal, for example, an adventurer's guild. Many of these are automatic. You just have to go into the area. So upon completion of this quest, or finding all the warp rooms, this is what your teleportation hub ends up looking like. And as a result, Camilla, the Witch of Castle Village, will show up on your doorstep and whisk you away to Galdora, an entirely different continent. She'll take you to an outpost overlooking the terrifying Crimson Badlands. This incredibly dangerous wasteland in front of Castle Village, filled with monsters. There's a boss monster called Apophis here, there's an Iridium Quarry. Even if you're wearing the most armor possible, it's a really difficult place. It is such a fascinating place, it deserves its own video, but it's due to get a massive overhaul when we see Patch 2.0, which is all about Castle Village in the future. So that's the Crimson Badlands, a special unlockable adventure area, but it's not the only one inside of Valley Expanded. There's also the Highlands. The Highlands is a beautiful place which was heavily inspired by the Haunted Chocolatea trailer. Look at it, look at this vista. Straight out of that trailer, this whole adventurous area is unlockable through befriending Lance and doing a quest for Marlon. Getting two hearts with Lance triggers Marlon turning up and saying, Hey, I've, I want a bunch of weird monster parts for personal reasons. He, he's weird. I don't get it. And then he takes you on a boat ride up to the Highlands and then you forever have access to it. You even get access to Lance's little outpost here. You can sleep here and store stuff in the house. It's really convenient. I mean, convenient if you can survive running through the woods and being attacked by everything that comes out of the undergrowth to kill you. This area has a lot going on. The most notable thing is the cave filled with shadow people, which has an abundant amount of resources in it. There's even a cool little mini quest with a dwarf who's stuck in a cage here. They want you to go to the top of the mountain and fight a monster to get a key to get him out. That unlocks a dwarf shop with really cool items in it. It's really worth doing. It's, it's a fun adventure. There's crops tied to every monster in the location, so you're not just wasting your time killing them. You can start growing an entirely different kind of crop because of the seeds that you get here. Monster crops are fun to grow, and if, you, if you're all about making a profit with different kinds of crops, then the Highlands is a big win-win for you. This isn't the only area that Lance unlocks. Lance will take you over to Fable Reef once you get to know it really well. Fable Reef is where the first slash Adventurer's Guild is located. There's tons of forageables on the beach here, plus there are unique fish to catch. I think there's what, a torpedo fish? A lot of stuff goes down in Fable Reef, a lot of it is connected to Lance. Lance is your big doorway to unlocking a lot of interesting things. Get to know Lance! Who knows what he'll unlock in the future. Now we've come to the bonus section of the video. A lot of this stuff is kind of like filled with spoilers. Some of it isn't, a lot of it is. A lot of it is tied to romancing different people. Spoilers ahead for this segment, folks, if you don't want to know things about certain Stardew Valley Expanded spouses, do not watch this segment. It will be individually marked, so you can skip the characters, if you want to. If you get eight hearts with Sophia, you then get to go to the Grampledon suburbs where Scarlet lives, and see a lot of different cutscenes connected to Scarlet as a character. Scarlet is essentially unlocked as an interactable NPC when you do this, it's well worth doing it. If you get Victor to 14 hearts after you've married him, he'll redo the bridge at Shearwater Bridge and give you a fancy new bridge. That's something you will not see or know about unless you really like Victor. Claire gets a really special 14 heart event where she stars in a movie which plays at the cinema. This is an amazing event. Napoleon unlocked this one for us. Sophia has a massive egregious Comic Con visit which even has yours truly do a cameo on the, on, on the main floor, for some reason. I got a couple of cameos in this mod, what can I say, I'm lucky. The wizard is a fully interactable NPC in this, you could even marry him. And he has one of the most exquisite cutscenes I've ever seen. Again, something you might not invest your time into, but... One hell of an underwater mermaid related special cutscene is possible with the wizard. Here's a special mention for you, the Secret Woods itself has been greatly expanded. The Secret Woods, as its name so claims, is a secret area traditional to Stardew Valley. You get through the stump using the right kind of axe and then you gain access to the Secret Woods, but it was quite a small place in the vanilla. Now it's huge. 
There's a lot more going on in here, and there's a lot of seasonal forage in here which can be used for special recipes unique to the mod. It really gives you something exciting to look forward to with every single season. You can come in here and pick up something new every single time. Now there are many more tidbits of like secrets and special things that happen in Stardew Valley Expanded. It is chock full of content. Here's a few examples for you. If you're trying to date Victor and his mother Olivia at the same time, Cam there's a way for Camilla to turn up and make fun of you and, and bust your balls about it. That's really funny. Oh, God! My, my, fancy seeing you here near this very refined residence. Olivia has an amazing cutscene that takes you to a, multiple locations, a Harry Potter-like railway station, a quaint cottage, and an incredible vineyard holiday destination. You may or may not consider this to be a secret, but it's an interesting bit of uh, information. Anyway, it is possible to actually build Morris a townhouse, should you go all the way with the Choja route. You can help him out with a quest line where he needs a bunch of iron, and you build him this really modern house. And that gives you access to a Super Joja Cola vending machine, which will give you Super Joja Cola for broken CDs. This cola gives you an incredible speed boost. It's a lot of fun to be able to get a hold of that. So let's wrap things up with a secret related to me. I guess you could call it an Easter egg, but they're more of a secret. But if you get Abigail to 12 hearts, if she's your favorite, you'll see me in a Joja Pet Shop in a new cutscene that gets added to the game as well. So yeah, that's it. Let us know if we've missed anything. Comment below to add in any secrets that you think are relevant to this video. It really, it'll really, really help people out in the log run if you do that. We, we'll pin the best comment if, if we've missed something really big and egregious. We probably have. So thanks again for watching this video. We've got a massive Stardew Valley expanded playlist. Pretty much everything we've talked about in terms of unlockable content in this video has probably been covered in an individual video. So hunt through the playlist and you can see those videos. We probably highlighted them a lot in this video as well. And thank you to our Kofi supporters, our Joja VIPs over on Kofi who support the channel directly and get a bunch of perks, including being on my fridge at the end of a video like this. Thanks a lot, people. You rule.